Section 5.2 is probably the most important section in this unit on quadratics. The topic is quadratics and standard form. In section 5.1 we talked about vertex form. However, that's the least popular way to write a quadratic equation. You're going to see it almost always written in standard form, which I just put in the box for you. Standard form is something I want you to memorize. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c and you're going to learn real soon that these values a, b, and c have significant meaning in everything we do when we talk about a quadratic equation. Now, I've, drew, I've drawn a little arrow. We want to talk about the a value first. If, and I don't want you to think about a being the slope as we did in, in prior units. It's not really a slope when you deal with quadratics since a quadratic graph is a parabola, which is something we talked about in the last video. There's not really slope that's involved here. So what A controls and what it does is this. If A is greater than 0, the graph opens upward. So if it's a positive A value, the graph opens up and it holds water, just like you see here. The domain will be all real numbers. I can put any number in for X since the graph goes on forever because of the arrows in both directions. And the point that I circled down here at the bottom, which is called the vertex, the vertex is a minimum value of the function. It is the smallest value the range of the function will be. Therefore, the range will always be y is greater or equal to whatever that minimum value is, whether it's negative 2 or 4 or whatever it is. The range will always be bigger than that number since it's a minimum. If A is less than 0, it means it's negative, which flips the graph upside down. So the graph will open down. The water pours out. The domain is still all real numbers. However, the range is now this vertex is now a maximum value. It's the highest the graph is going to get. Therefore, the range is all y values that are less than or equal to whatever that maximum is. I apologize. My graph is slightly off. The whiteboard is, is off a little bit. But this point right here at the top of the graph, that point is now called a maximum. So that's what A does. Graph either opens up and it's got a minimum value. If A is greater than 0, the graph has a minimum. And if A is less than 0, the graph or the function has a maximum. All right. Now let's go on. B and C. C is really the y-intercept. That's probably the most important meaning that C has. The B value is hard to determine what it does or how it affects the graph or the function. But it does play a role in two things. The line of symmetry, which I abbreviated LOS, and the vertex. You need to memorize this formula, please. The line of symmetry is the equation x equals Negative b divided by 2 times a. The b and the a value play a role in that. Whatever those numbers are, the line of symmetry will always be negative b over 2a. The vertex. Whatever answer you get for the line of symmetry that is also, and I'm going to do a little bit of erasing here so I have a little bit of room, negative b over 2a is also the x value of the vertex. That is also the x value of the vertex. To figure out the y value of the vertex, you need to plug that into the function, whatever the function is, 
and figure out what y is. So very, very important. The, the line of symmetry, you've got to find that first in order to find the vertex. Also, whenever you get this answer, this answer will be either the minimum or the maximum value. So if the, if the problem asks you for a minimum or a maximum, you need to figure out the y value of the vertex. Those go hand in hand. So memorize that. Write that down. Take those notes. And that is what standard form is all about. And now we're going to use this information to help us graph. So if you need to pause this, please do. Otherwise, you can go to the next slide with me, and we are going to do a little graphing using that information. All right, here's our problem. I want to graph f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 6. First of all, I notice it's square. Therefore, it's going to make a parabola. And the next thing I do is I make note of what the values a, b, and c are. a is 1, which is right there. b is negative 4, which is right there and c is equal to 6, which is right there. Now, we've got to answer a bunch of questions in order to graph this. The first question, does the graph open up or down? Well, since the a value is positive, it's going to open up. That helps us. The next thing we need to figure out when we graph is we've got to find the line of symmetry. And from the prior slide, I told you the line of symmetry is equal to x equals negative b over 2a. Well, b is negative 4, so I have a negative of a negative 4 divided by 2 times whatever a is. So I just plugged in those two points into my equation. And a negative of a negative is positive 4, 2 times 1 is 2, and I get x equals 2. We know x equals 2 is a vertical line. So there is my line of symmetry on my graph. The vertex. Well, I need a coordinate of the vertex. Whatever we got for the line of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now, i got to figure out the y-value. How do I do that? I take my equation, x squared Oops, x squared minus, I've got to rewrite this, x squared minus 4x plus 6, and I'm going to put 2 in for x. So I get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6, and that equals 4 minus 8 plus 6. And what does that equal? Negative 4 plus 6, that looks like positive 2 as well. So therefore, my vertex is the point 2, 2 which should lie on my dotted line. Beautiful. Next, the y-intercept. From the prior slide, I told you the y-intercept is the c value. Well, in this case, c is 6. So therefore, on my y-axis, I plot a dot at 6. Now, since that dot lies 2 off the line, I go 2 to the other side of the line of symmetry, and that's my third point of my graph. And now, finally, and I'm going to do a little erasing here. Actually, I'll just write up top. I need five points on my parabola. I've got three. So therefore, I am going to pick an x value that I haven't used yet. Well, I've used x is 0, I've used x is 2, and I've used x is 4. That's where my dots are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick x is 1 right there with my black line. So I'm going to let x be 1, and I'm going to figure out what y is. So down below, I'm going to use my equation x squared minus 4x plus 6, and I'm going to put 1 in there. So I get 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 6. 
And what does that equal? Let's see, that's 1 minus 4, which is negative 3 plus 6. That would be positive 3. So therefore, the point 1, 3 should also be on my graph. But that is also one unit off the line, so I'm going to go one unit this way, and therefore I'm going to plot a dot right there using my line of symmetry right there. And there is, and I'm sorry again, this board is slightly off, but there is the graph of my function. Now, does it have a minimum or a maximum? Well, since the A value is positive, it has a minimum. And what is that minimum? That minimum is my Y value right here, which is 2. That's the smallest the graph, or the lowest in the range that the graph gets. Well, what's the domain? Well, from the earlier slide, I told you the domain is all real numbers for this for quadratics, your domain will always be all real numbers. What's the range? Well, the range, as I told you on the prior slide, is if it's a minimum, it is the y values are all greater than or equal to whatever that minimum value is, which is 2. So obviously my graph, the lowest it gets is 2, and it goes up from there. So therefore my range are all numbers greater than or equal to 2. And that is how you graph a quadratic using the A, B, and C values in standard form.